Hello, everybody. This is Walt Miner. I'm the AGL Community Manager, and I'm coming to you live for on tape from Chicago, Illinois. My um, Twitter handle is at vstarwalt, and my email address is on here as well. So the title of my talk today is an introduction to automotive grade Linux. I'm going to cover the uh, governance of automotive grade Linux, how we're structured, our expert groups, how to contribute code, all sorts of things. So if you're new to AGL or whether you've been paying attention to AGL for a few years and you want to know what's going on, hopefully I'll have the information you need. Otherwise, uh, feel free to shoot me an email or ask me a question uh, at the end of the presentation. So when I was putting this together, um, I realized last, well, everybody should realize the last 12 months have been really interesting. This is our third virtual all member meeting. Um, a year ago, we were supposed to meet in Hawaii. And so here on the, the upper right, you can see this was the, uh, I have a whole mess of these stickers, probably a couple hundred of stickers that I was supposed to give away in Hawaii. Uh, they're probably going to be on sale on eBay soon, but just in case they don't sell, you can ask me for a, a sticker next time we do get to meet in person. Um, the last time we met, in person at an all member meeting was about 18 years ago. I mean, 18 months ago, um, it just seems like 18 years ago. This picture down here in the bottom right corner is from uh, the all member meeting, a dinner we had in Monte Carlo, a group of us uh, who got together one night and had a wonderful Italian meal. And then, uh, you know, since then we've missed CES in uh, 2021 this year, we've, um, this was 18 months ago. Then there was, uh, we had CES right after that. Um, then we went into, uh, we went into FOSDEM. I don't have any pictures from FOSDEM that were any good, but then you can see the last, very last event I attended in person was Embedded World last year in Nuremberg. And I got home from that right about 53 weeks ago. And, um, that was the first sign that things were going to really be different this year. Boy, oh boy. Um, and hopefully, then we, you know, of course, last year we missed our other in-person events. We missed CES. Um, boy, oh boy. I hope we can all get together again in person this year. Um, so automotive grade Linux. We're a open source project, collaborative project based at the Linux Foundation. Uh, I myself am a Linux Foundation employee, and here on Automotive Grade Linux, we say we're collaborating to build the car of the future through rapid innovation. Uh, we are really focused on rapid innovation of vehicle software using the AGL unified code base. The unified code base is the distribution that we create from Yocto, and um, that code base we have. Uh, focused, we're addressing, we're trying to address all of the needs of software in a car. I like to think that if there's Linux running in a car, it should be running automotive grade Linux. And that includes, you know, our traditional infotainment systems where we've been very strong in the past, instrument cluster, where we're, which we've been working on for, for a, very strongly in the past year, telematics, connectivity, heads up displays, uh, I'll get a little bit into our functional safety story. And you know, eventually moving into ADAS and autonomous driving. The AGL unified code base. So the idea of the unified code base is we're going to take um, software from around the open source industry, from around the automotive industry, and use you know, put that together and develop seventy to eighty percent of the starting point for a production project. And really, we were aiming to reduce fragmentation in the industry by combining the best of open source. Really, you know, really focused on developing an ecosystem of developers, suppliers, and just expertise, all using this single platform. AGL, you know, the unified code base is Yocto based. Uh, we've been using the LTS version of Yocto, which is the Dunfell branch or 3.1. It's BitBake, open embedded. We're using System D. Uh, we're using the repo tool from Android. Um, we've had contributions from around the industry, from Toyota, from from Adit, 
from Denso, from Panasonic. Uh, a lot of different companies in the automotive industry have 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 uh, donated code or worked on the code. Um, it's been a very, very exciting collaborative project. Now, for those of you who are who are new to AGL, you'll you should you'll probably heard us talking about fish. And uh, so, you know, one day in the early days of AGL, the unified code base, they said, Walt, you know, just naming things version one is kind of boring. We need a better name. So I, of course, put on my thinking hat and came up with fish names. Yes, we'll use fish names. So I spend a great deal of time coming up with new fish names. You can see we've done two releases every year since 2016, each one named after a fish. We did the Jumping Jellyfish release 10.0 in September. And most recently, we like to introduce Kooky Koi. Kooky Koi was the latest UCB release made just about three, four weeks ago on February 17th. Um, little introduction to Kooky Koi. So we we used to uh, we used to upgrade our Yocto version with every with every six month release. You know, twice a year it became very difficult. We decided we would switch to once a year. Then uh, and that actually was okay. It was an okay cadence for us. Um, but last year, right about this time, uh, Yocto announced they would have a long term support version uh, three point one. And so since then, we've made uh, the Jellyfish release and the Koi release on Yocto, the LTS version 3.1. And we intend to continue to use that version for the next few releases. Cookie Koi, we, uh, we added from our IVI expert group, which is led by Toyota, we added rule-based arbitration into the AGL compositor. So that's now a compile time option. We've got the Toyota base system that they donated and they'll be showing a demonstration of later on in the AMM uh, available as a technology demo. We've had web apps available for a few releases now and we upgraded that to uh, Chromium version 79 and we updated our web app manager as well along with that. Speech recognition, which we've had available for a while, we updated to the Alexa Auto SDK 2.3 um, the AGL compositor and window manager updates were completed. We added uh, additional Waltham integration and uh, screenshot capability for the ability to add some testing using screenshots. Our uh, connectivity expert group added a tool called Canaloni. Uh, it was added by uh, some guys at the University of Re Reutlingen University in Germany that enables remote CAN testing. So you can now have a remote host that sends messages to another host, which then via UDP and then turns those into CAN messages that you can then send and receive from a remote host. It allows them or you, you can do this too, to share a single piece, a very expensive piece of hardware that they've developed, an automotive simulator. Uh, our continuous integration and test team uh, added additional code coverage for application builds and PI AGL tests for a lot of our service binders. Uh, we did a large number of BSP updates, including Renaissance BSPs. Uh, the AGL reference hardware was added. The BSP for that was added. Uh, TI BSP was updated. The SandCloud BSP for the BeagleBone Extend BeagleBone extended was BeagleBone enhanced rather was, was added. We added NXP uh, IMX8 updates, and then our virtualization expert group added a Vert IO front end that we can now build in the if, with AGL. And I'd like to introduce our next fish up, Lucky Lamprey will be coming out in uh, J July of this year. And Magic Marlin will be coming out in February of 2022. So look, watch for those coming out later this year. Here is our uh, updated schedule. This is available on our wiki page. Um, you can see we made the Kooky Koi release, like I said. We have uh, the 12.0 Lucky Lamprey release scheduled for July. And Magic Marlin will start at the, uh, in the September timeframe. Uh, actually, probably in the July timeframe, once we make the release for Lucky Lamprey. 
You can see this is our, our, our intended list of uh, get together, face to face get togethers. In a more typical year, we would try to get together, uh, a we would try to have a technical face to face meeting with our system architecture team and our expert groups to work through some of the high level issues and some of the details of the architecture. We try to get together about every two months, whether it's at an all member meeting, whether it's at a, a member's a site. Um, if you go back to our 2019 schedule, you'll see we did that. We, we've been doing it about those every two months things. But unfortunately, this year, again, that's probably not going to happen. You can see we've already lost ELC Embedded Linux Conference off of our schedule as that was canceled for this year. Hopefully, we'll have an AMM scheduled for some time in the fall. We'll all get together in person. Embedded Linux Conference Europe and Open Source Summit Europe is scheduled for late September in Dublin. And Automotive Linux Summit, hopefully, we'll see a, a date firmed up for that in December. So AGL, governance. Um, AGL basically takes a bottom-up approach. Most technical decision-making is in the hands of our expert groups. Um, the advisor board is responsible for the overall uh, technical direction, budget, and strategy. The steering committee oversees the technical activities. The system architecture team looks after end-to-end -end system, uh, the end-to-end -end system architecture and consistency between the expert groups, as well as making decisions on which Yocto version we should use in BSP updates. That kind of those system integration type issues mostly rests with the system architecture team. Um, and the expert groups can run one or more projects. Um, they tend to, they almost, they all meet about every other week. There's a complete schedule available on our groups.io page. I've got a, a lot of different links to share with you at the end of the presentation. The slides will all be available or should all be available already for you to look at and you can click on all those hyperlinks. So a little bit more about our governance. Um, the AGL advisory board includes all of the AGL Platinum and Gold members, plus a number of elected Silver members. And during the advisory board meeting the other day, there was the election. Of course, I'm recording this in advance. I don't know who won. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you. Um, <laughs> advisory board typically is our, these are typically executives and senior manager level people. They meet about every quarter, approximately once a quarter. Um, lately, it's all been on Zoom, but usually at all member meetings and Automotive Linux Summit, we would have an in-person meeting. Um, they're responsible for the budget, the strategy, the overall direction of the project. Um, and they usually designate a portion of the budget to funding key development initiatives. Um, but they're not usually a very uh, technical group. Like as you can see, they're usually executives and senior management level people. And so they've delegated um, some of that technical responsibility to the AGL steering committee. The steering committee includes representatives from the advisory board companies. And these are typically more uh, senior development managers, you know, architects, people like that. The steering committee meets monthly. Um, and they prioritize the overall technical roadmap to determine the project direction from a technical point of view and spending of those development funds that were designated by the advisory board. So over the last uh, month or two, um, we started this exercise that we do annually with the steering committee where we uh, compile a feature list the compete, we, we basically get an annual list of features from our expert groups, from the system architecture team, and uh, pull those together and present that to the steering committee, a uh, rolled up feature list from those groups. Then the steering committee themselves can add additional features to that list uh, based on their advisory board perspective and what they would, what the advisory board, you know, the strategic direction given to them by the advisory board. And they take that final feature list and then rank those uh, for a final overall prioritized list. Um, we got a late start in 2021. Um, we're expecting the completion of this exercise to be sometime in April. Um, 
and you'll see part of our our meetings uh our face-to-face -face meeting on thursday will probably be dedicated to doing some more reviewing of this feature list um just to give you an idea of the output of that Um, so I take the top 10 features and try to give a progress report to the steering committee every month and the advisory board every quarter as to how we're doing. So this is kind of, I'm going to show you the final progress report for 2020. So our, you know, ranking from one to 10, uh, highest priority was instrument cluster. We made a lot of good progress in the instrument cluster last year and, and even into this year. Um, we let out some contracts for the sound system and for DRM sharing that are nearly completed or the DRM sharing should be nearly completed and the sound system is in progress and should be completed by the end of June. We had a uh, tuner rate radio APIs and service uh, the, the uh, service finder and the reference application uh, that was delayed by the product readiness architecture of the IBI expert group and some decisions they need to make. And we'll get into that in a few minutes. Bluetooth will again, delayed by the product readiness as well as some telephony. But in both cases, we uh, we did some updated uh, use cases. We got some use cases from Toyota that we, we used to do some feature analysis and some gap analysis. So when we do start working on that, we've already got some analysis of which use cases we wanna focus on. Um, safety and security, virtualization, in particular, VertIO was a high priority for the uh, advisory board and steering committee. And the, the virtualization expert group made very steady progress throughout 2020 that culminated in the availability of a VertIO machine being available for build in the Kukui Koi release. Um, we built the reference hardware that was designed by the reference hardware system architecture group. And the BSP is now available in the Kuki Koi release. Uh, Rule-based arbitration. So you'll see a presentation on that as part of the Toyota uh, technology demonstration of their base system that was included. Uh, it was donated by Denso and integrated by Denso. I already mentioned before the Chromium and Web App Manager updates were performed and uh, we were updated to Chromium 79 and that was included in Kuki Koi. And then uh, we had some features around next generation cockpit architecture and uh, long term support of the US UCB and we didn't make a lot of progress on those. So let's talk about expert groups. Um, a great man once said. You don't have to be an expert to work in an expert group. Yep, that's a good, that's a quote, man. That is a, Bartlett is looking at that one. Um, so uh, at the top of the expert group uh, structure, we have the system architecture team. So they're responsible for the overall system architecture. Uh, they're responsible for the Yocto versioning and the builds. AGL, just to let you know, if, in case you don't already know, AGL is a gold member of the Yocto project. And we have, we have a seat on their technical uh, advisory board. Jan Simon Muller had you takes that seat for us. Uh, like I explained a few minutes ago, we're using the Yocto LTX version, LTS version 3.1, uh, currently in Koi and in Jellyfish, and we'll continue to use it at least through the Magic Marlin release. Uh, they've committed to support at least through the LTS version, at least through the spring of next year. So that's two years of support versus their typical nine months that they were doing before. Um, and I think there'll still be an evaluation early next year as to whether they continue that support and how they continue that support or if they move on to a new LTS version. Their, oh, the system architecture team is also responsible for the build system and device profiles. Uh, just to let you know, there's been some discussion or consideration about moving to GitLab for our development process. The Linux Foundation has uh, made some um, agreement with GitLab to provide a platinum level, or I forget what they're called, membership in, for GitLab. And so uh, we may be, we'll be looking at first moving our CI system, our CI to uh, GitLab, and then possibly the rest of the, the development process. 
And most importantly, or maybe last but not least, uh, cross expert group coordination is the, is the domain of the system architecture team. So we have a good number of expert groups that are currently meeting, and we'll just go through those. Um, wanted to lead off with the instrument cluster expert group. This was formed a few years ago. It's being led by Suzuki Motor Company, um, focusing on reducing the footprint and optimizing AGL for uh, instrument cluster. So putting in their 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 vehicles, which may be uh, you know more inexpensive vehicles, focusing on a single instrument cluster slash IVI type solution, and also possibly putting that in some of their motorcycle applications. Um, very much focused on functional safety, uh, ASIL B. Um, we're working in collaboration with another Linux Foundation project, which is the ELISA project, enabling Linux in safety applications. A um, little bit more about the ELISA project. Uh, actually, AGL is an associate member of the ELISA project. They formed an automotive working group last year. Um, one of our member companies, uh, Addit, leads that leads that working group, um, and uh, we basically are working with them. They are working using the AGL UCD as their as their test mule, and adding some of the safety critical functions to test out using the ACB using the AGL UCB. So this is a very exciting effort. Um, really, hope, I'm really ho hopeful that, that some really good and productive uh, outcomes are going to come from the Lisa AGL collaboration. Next, we have the IVI expert group or the production readiness, IVI production readiness expert group. This is being led by Toyota, um, really focusing on bringing more product ready components into the AGL UCB uh, and focusing on enabling key features that are being needed by the IVI systems that are in development today, but you may not see deployed until model year 25, model year 26. Um, last year, Toyota donated their base system, which was integrated into Kuki Koi. And like I said, they'll be uh, demonstrating that in another talk. Uh, as part of the IVI expert group, some of their initial work, there was a feature gap analysis that was performed by the OE, some of the OEMs and tier ones. Uh, we also had an API donated by Denso for the tuner application for, for tuner uh, reference. And so now that we've gone through this first phase with RBA integrated and the base system integrated from Toyota, we're looking at the next phase to determine what UCB components need to be added or upgraded. And that we, I think we'll see reflected in that final steering committee uh, priority list that will come out next month. Just wanna point out that for all the expert groups, I included a link to their wiki page. Uh, most of the expert groups also have a, a confluence page. So the wiki page is used for, stat for status and uh, meeting minutes typically. Confluence will be used for architecture requirements, things like that. Uh, and some things may be captured in JIRA even, but there's no specific JIRA uh, ticket for uh, an expert group. Uh, next up, we have the Application Framework and Security Expert Group. Um, this group is responsible for uh, application lifecycle in conjunction with, especially now in conjunction with the IBI Expert Group, um, SDKs, uh, security framework and policies and strategy for distribution, um, software update, uh, window manager, compositor, and the web app manager. Uh, some things we're going to be looking at this year, especially in conjunction with the IVI expert group, will be, should we continue to use SMAC as our Linux security module? Should we move on to SE Linux or something else? Uh, the base system has some different ideas about uh, init scripts than uh, the current system D implementation. How are we going to how are we going to merge those ideas? So that'll be coming. A lot of that work will be done by the application framework and security expert group in collaboration with the IVI expert group. Next, we have the connectivity expert group. They are responsible for vehicle connectivity, like CAN and most. 
uh, network vehicle firewalls, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, NFC, cellular modems. Um, they had in the past done a telematics reference device. That's now moving to the uh, vehicle to cloud expert group. Um, at the vehicle to cloud expert group, I'll mention in a few minutes, but they're looking at doing three telematics reference designs this year. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. Next, we have the reference hardware system architecture expert group. This group uh, led by, is led by Mazda. And really what they're trying to do is reduce the gap between the reference boards. There's a lot of off the shelf reference boards that we've used in the past from Qualcomm, Renesas, Intel, uh, TI, and go from those reference boards to something that's more in a two bin form factor for a vehicle. And they designed and built uh, the generation, generation one of this reference hardware was built by Panasonic. The specs are available here. I've got the wrong page on the wiki page. Um, the specs are available on the wiki page and they're, submit, they're basically soliciting input for what gen two of, these, of this hardware should look like. Um, as we get as we go through this year, we'll continue to collect input as people continue to use the hardware and we evaluate what it's capable of, what it's not capable of, and we'll figure out what the next generation should look like. We have the speech expert group. Uh, this was formed about three years ago at CES with Amazon and Nuance and Voicebox Technologies. Vision, speech in every vehicle. Um, like I said before, we've got uh, Alexa Auto SDK 2.3 that's now in Cookie Hoy. Um, and uh, the speech recognition expert group, you know, if you want to participate, it's a little bit, uh, they could use a little, uh, little support. So uh, we'd really welcome some in input, especially from these speech companies or from OEMs and tier ones. And maybe you can provide us some more of your uh, speech requirements that we can maybe enable in AGLUCB. We have the virtualization expert group focusing on hypervisors um, within AGL, looking at a variety of different hypervisors. We really don't want to lock in the hypervisor solution. A lot of the participants are hypervisor uh, companies. So um, they worked last year on enabling VertIO in AGL. This picture here, you see uh, this, this uh, architecture diagram came from a white paper that the virtualization expert group published a few years ago. And um, that's available for download. You get the link at the vert.io at the vert eg wiki page. And this basically shows off uh, what they did. So they now have front end support in Cookie Koi. The documentation is available on our documentation page. And there's a reference demo with a uh, a, a video available and um, future work this year, they're gonna extend the scope of the supported virtual IO to vert IO to fulfill more of the use cases. So this is a group that's been really going strong for the last year. Uh -oh. Okay, I see what Jerry did. All right, Google the Cloud Expert Group, um, looking at telematics, personalization, authentication and authorization, um, and really de defining uh, three reference architectures this year. And if you go to their wiki page or their Confluence page, which I forgot to add the link to, again, I'll make sure I put it in the slides when they're uploaded. There's a really good confluence page that we've started to try to collect the requirements for these uh, three reference applications we want to do this year. Um, that's now uh, got a lot of participation from Amazon uh, Web Services and uh, ICAS, a new member, but we're also looking for telematics, uh, OEM telematics tier ones, OEMs with their telematics requirements, looking for those both those in-vehicle requirements you know, data harvesting and those in the back end server connection requirements. So 
very important, just a general, very important topic, including connected car, smart parking garage, location-based services, of course, identity management, a um, lot of really good, a lot of really good and interesting stuff going on in this expert group. Continuing, continuous integration automated test expert group. This is our last expert group, not least by any means, Jan Simon. Um, they build and they smoke test every every patch that gets submitted, gets built, gets smoke tested on on all hardware using our Lava setup. Um, they're, they basically manage our Jenkins and Lava deployment. Uh, they do daily snapshot building they, and testing. They do device tests on real hardware. We have uh, manual tests that get done that get performed weekly. Um, so, and we get a test report every week. So, a um, lot of really good and important work. And if, as we manage the transition to possibly manage the transition to GitLab, that'll be managed out of the CIE the CIAT uh, expert group. So um, final thoughts, I know I've kind of moved a little fast, but um, what, I, what I really want to leave you with is automotive grade Linux for an open source project means you can help out. How can you help? Write code, I like to say commit early, commit often, uh, commit early, get early feedback from, from members, Join our developer call, join our expert group calls. I'll have some links to those here in another few slides. Test, you, don't, you can't write code, you don't wanna write code. Test, you can, download the, you can download the regular builds, the weekly builds, the release builds, uh, file bug reports. Drop us a line if things are going well. I'd love to know things are going well. Um, Write documentation. Documentation is really important. And some of our best documentation has come from people who have tried to test things out. And they go to use the documentation and they find ways to improve it. The documentation site was revamped this year. We had a Google season of documentation student born on, did a lot of great work there. It's easier than ever to, to contribute to the documentation. And just remember, Everything we do is open and transparent. We are an open source project. Um, you know, once you see the project list come out from the steering committee, you can move these projects forward. You can move any project forward that you're interested in, that your company is interested in, or you personally. There are projects that will get done this year and that have gotten done every year because someone or some group is passionate about it. Um, Steering committee doesn't have to approve anything. If you want to submit code, as, as Jan Simon says, patches welcome. Submit the patches. We will look at them. We'll help you get them in. Um, join our development community mailing list um, and have fun. Um, I'm all about having fun if you haven't figured that out. So just some links here that you can, uh, you can get from the slides after you download them, uh, getting started documentation, our wiki page, we use JIRA for project management. We have pre-built binaries. Uh, the release notes are all available on the wiki page. And we have a uh, weekly developer call on Tuesdays you can join. Ask me anything. Um, I'll try to answer. Or if I can't answer, I usually have somebody who's smarter than me, which isn't that hard, uh, to answer the questions. Um, we're on IRC. And uh, we have a really good mailing list. You can also connect to AGL on social media via Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Um, so with that, uh, we'll go to the Q&A part. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>